My talk on Tuesday is called uh, Untold Wealth for the Benefit of the Nations and it is really um, something that has grown out of my work for about, of about 27 years now. It is work primarily based in archives where, I, well, the, where I'm interested in, in these people who are called liberated Africans. I mean, they were known by other names most commonly by, as liberated Africans. And these were people who were liberated from the holds of slave vessels in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, in the Caribbean, and in, in the Mediterranean uh, seas. They, became, they were liberated primarily by uh, British naval vessels that were the prevention squadrons, and there were also American ships for a while, and then there were also Brazilian ships who had all agreed at some point through treaties and the Americans through their own abolition act of the slave trade to intercept and try and, and, and stall uh, slave, the, the constant cap capture of Africans and, and, the, and carrying them away from Africa. But in truth, this word liberated was an untruth because the people who were liberated were generally sent to do the service of the colonial nations and how did they serve? They served by going to uh, work as apprentices. They were apprenticed sometimes in the very, very plantations where they would have been sold as slaves. The, these places that they were taken to, um, the west coast of Africa, in the mid-Atlantic would have been St. Helena, in the Indian Ocean it would be uh, the Seychelles, even Durban, Cape Town, and way up to Aden and Bombay. In fact, the Bombay Africans, as they were called, were essential to all of those British explorers, Speke, Burton, and also to Livingston, because they were people who had been taken as adults and who knew the way to get back to someone. And so that's why they became, became the guides for these people. But the, the, as apprentices, they could serve between 5 to 14 years. They also did other work. They could be put in model Christian villages where they would supposedly stall Islam. Uh, this would be uh, in, in Sierra Leone, uh, Gambia, uh, around what, in what we now call Nigeria, uh, and of course in, in, in Bombay. Uh, they, they were also made to serve in another way. They allowed nations to claim moral ascendancy. You could be a modern nation if you did not slave. And look, here's the proof. We liberated these people, did we not? And then you could also slave off at other nations in the polite language of your treaties. The treaties that were signed between these nations that allowed, uh, uh, for example, British uh, naval vessels to board, Portuguese vessels to board, Brazilian vessels, Spanish vessels. These treaties, I would like to say, were the rehearsal for the Berlin Conference, that gentlemanly agreement on how to divide Africa. But it's really the liberated Africans we have to turn to, the new st uh, practices and apparatuses of surveillance, but also this idea that eventually comes out of the best high moral, the best enlightenment intention to stop enslaving Africans, keep Africans in Africa.